Good evening, it's 7 o'clock, we have a quorum, we'll call a planning board meeting to order. Happy New Year everybody. Thank you too. First up for general information is Larry Tuttle. Yes, and I want to also present uh, Mark Krause and you know Randy. And uh, it is for a property that uh, Mark wishes to acquire uh, with a change of use adjacent to the cafe. Okay. I'm uh, Mark Krauss. This is Esalon Cafe. Yeah, Mark Krauss, owner of Esalon Cafe for the last 10 years. I'm also uh, owner of property on the common with my wife and two year old son. And we're currently looking to pur purchase the adjacent building to Esalon, uh, 97 Russell Street, also known as and now yeah. defun defunct Hadley Auto Service. So, and we are. Uh, Currently under agreement to purchase said building, and I'm here uh, seeking your help and assistance in making this possible. So, what are you asking us? Um, looking to <laughs> change the use uh, of the property. To? Um, I am. The business, uh, there will be storage right now. Uh, Esalon stores some of the coffee products uh, in the rear. Will you be? be able to eliminate parking on a common? You first of all, a little bit of history of Esalon in case you don't know it. Esalon has been in violation of site plan approval almost since day one. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, parking wise. Um, you're parking where you're not supposed to and you're parking on a common and you added a significant outdoor seating area to be more non-conforming as far as parking goes. So we will give you no approval for the new property until you become in, pro in compliance with your existing property. That's my opinion. Um, well, we didn't clear. So I am. What do you want to do? With the <coughs> yeah. What do you want to do? You want to make more parking? Or so so my my ultimate goal is to support my current operations of my business without adding any additional traffic. Um, so uh, our wholesale operations and such, um, we do have uh, the potential to at the least offer um, parking for employees, which would alleviate several spaces. Um, and uh, you know, I realized that um, I personally purchased the business uh, a year and a half after it started. Um, so it was in its current state. Um, and we have obviously been successful and we enjoy doing business in Hadley here. Uh, it's been a great time for us. And I'm looking, uh, we've tried everything possible to keep you know, the, the common safe. I, like I said, I live on the common, just a couple doors down, so um, with my son. So I'd like to be like, have the common be as safe as possible. So, um, But everybody doesn't park out in the common like you know either. Yeah, the the Hadley Auto Service, right. there is a large enough lot there to provide, my opinion, adequate, more than adequate parking to support Esalon and probably anything else you want to do there, mm -hmm. which could eliminate all the parking on the common and bring your property into compliance. It's going to simply require that you enforce it. Right. I will, um, I actively have tried my best to make sure people don't park on the common. Um, it's not my decision that they park in the common. It's the but, public. But it's your property. responsibility. If you weren't there, you wouldn't be parking there. It's right? your responsibility. Period. Right. You, you right. can't. It, it, it's it's an excuse to say you're parking. I mean, prior to the have the auto service, you probably don't have room. We won't argue that. But if you purchase the Hadley Auto Service, that's a fairly significant piece of property mm -hmm. that should provide more than adequate parking for Esalon <coughs> and anything reasonable you want to do with the Hadley Auto Service building. Okay, that's very fair of you. Um, I can discuss that with uh, Randy Eiser, how we can make that happen, and Larry, who uh, had other offer in their assistance to me on that matter. So I'd be happy to take a look at that in more detail um, and discuss that and go from there. If you request, I would venture that if you requested of the Board of Selectmen and the Police Department the ability to put up some no parking signs 
and with the direction of where to park for Esalon on, on the common, that could, it, it, it might be as reasonable as that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I would be willing to bet that the selectmen would be willing to support putting up some no parking signs on the common if you were to volunteer to get them there. I certainly wouldn't want to see a tow zone there, too. They have no business out there. That car common is one of the biggest commons in the, in the state of Massachusetts, and you're going to wreck it for us? No. So, so. Well, do you have any preliminary plans uh, of what you want to do with the space or? Not at this time. We haven't developed the space because it would be. No. Do you want to, you, are you going to talk about roasting your coffee there? Um, we haven't uh, looked at all of our options for operating at that property. I wanted to make certain before I proceeded with the purchase of the property that I was allowed to change the use of the property. Again. You need to tell us what you want to change it to. To just business use. Well, it is. It is business use. It is own right 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 business. Right 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 you need to tell us what your business use is and have a plan for it. Okay. The food, okay. Uh, warehousing and, and processing. So yeah, that, that is just warehousing. It's not, it's not a restaurant. It's not the restaurant. There's warehousing no and processing what? Warehousing and processing coffee. could be considered industrial. So we need to know what you're talking about. If you're talking of warehousing and processing for Esalon Cafe, yeah. that's probably a business use. If you're talking warehousing and processing for Esalon to wholesale, that's probably considered industrial. Okay. And that would not be allowed. Okay. okay. Would you guys be willing to waive the 50-foot front yard, no parking. We knew that one was well, coming. Well, the only reason I asked, we, we need, because it's such a narrow lot. Tell us what your use is. But, okay. We will, depending on the use, yeah. maybe. Okay, Esalon is not supposed to be parking where they're parking right. along Russell Street. Understood. Part of the original site plan was not to park there. They were supposed to put planters to prevent that. They're parking there. So, it depends, all right? We want to see what you're, what are you proposing? What, you come in here asking for change of use, and that's fine, so we can discuss. You're giving us some ideas, we're giving you some feedback, mm -hmm. yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Okay, but the reason I ask is to get, to maximize the spaces so that we can get as many people off the common as possible. That, that's, and I understand there's gonna be parking required for whatever other use they may decide they want to do. But I just want to understand ahead of time, yeah, okay, we can, you know, cram as many cars in here as possible to keep them off the common. You know, it's kind of hard. We'd all like to be in his position and have a business that's booming like it is. Um, so in order to try to deal with it and make everybody happy, mostly the town, I just want to be able to say, look, we can, you know, we can design a, a reasonable parking lot, but if we can utilize the, the some of the setback that you know the bylaw says we're not supposed to use that would be hugely helpful because that lot starts out widest at Esalon and narrows down when it gets towards Northampton. It's only might be less than a hundred feet wide at the west end. So I'll tell you my feeling on that. I would have absolutely no problem if that was discontinued parking on that common and no parking in a dope zone and put all that on Route 9 and, and to have the uh, auto service here, and I have no problem with that. But I have a big problem because it's been going on for a long time. The building inspector was notified, and nothing was ever done. And they kept parking there, parking there, dug all the grass. Who's going to fix all the grass there? You are? On the common. You going to fix that up? Uh, as I mentioned, I, I love the common since I live on the common, so I'd be happy to do anything. To I don't care how much you love it. I'd be you gonna happy fix to it? Do anything to preserve the Good. So it would also be helpful, obviously, to have a plan. Yes. A lot. Yeah. Uh, we have that. We have the, the survey. But you know, so. it's more. It's how far we step off and in what direction as to what requirements were to be imposed upon them because of this history with, with the, the cafe and the parking issue. As to how does that feed into? What we're trying to do with the well, the obviously, a lot of it's going to depend on how you are using the loading bays <coughs> or the mm -hmm. garage bays. If you don't need 
service bays that are on the front, yes, then parking in front might be an option. Um, but they're, they're going to have a certain square footage of the building, and they kind of knew, given the size of the square footage of the building, plus the parking available, it's going to be tight just for that property alone. Depending on use. No. no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. Two for one on parking. Two for one still, parking. still, that's an existing building. I mean, well, it's but because they're changing the use, they need to come in compliance. Well, right. I know that, but it, we got a problem with well, this where is, they are. This is what we have to we, see. We need to see a plan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Well, we just needed a little guidance to, to okay. see if it made sense to move forward or not. That's all. And we're, we're not anti-business. We want to work. Okay. We would like to. We want you to continue to be successful. So don't take it that way. We, we, we would really absolutely need to eliminate the parking on the common. That's a that's a guarantee. That's not an option. Um, can I, is it possible for me to get clarification on the use change of regards to what I may be doing over there? Um, you know, my intention is to uh, store and process coffee there possibly have some sort of food storage and food operations um, just to support my business now. If you're supporting the Esalon Cafe, then it's like an extension of the Esalon Cafe, even if it's a separate building. If you're storing and processing goods for sale other than to Esalon Cafe, then, like I said before, that might be considered industrial, and that's not a permitted use. So that's why we need some more clarification of what you want to do. Okay. You know, whether you're, whether you're supporting Esalon Cafe within the building or separate building right next door or separate building a mile down the street, you're supporting Esalon Cafe. Ca coffee. Um, you roast now. Ra rails, just so you'll understand, rails coffee roasters. In front, across from the base of the Salvation Army building, mm -hmm. that is an industrial zone. Mm -hmm. So they are. I know they sell to more than just themselves. They actually rails copies available all over the place. That is that part of the triangle from Mill Valley Road to South Maple Street. That triangle where the Mountain Farms Mall is. That is zoned industrial. Mm -hmm. So that is a permitted use and a permitted zone. We have never had to address the question of whether coffee roasting is an industrial use or not, whether if it's a manufacturing use or not. And that's something that would we'd be happy to discuss if that's what you are proposing to do there. Uh, I would be uh, manu I roast the coffee next door, and we um, store and process currently the coffee at 97 Russell Street. So in my intention is to continue to do that. And we have uh, we have our uh, state wholesale license um, and we continue we would like to continue to do that and have this space for that operation. So you can leave your roasting operation at the Esalon building. Where it is I Yes. You, but you run it energy. longer, perhaps, and the extra product you generate would go across the alleyway and be bagged and shipped. Exactly. So that doesn't sound like manufacturing all that much, but that's the kind of detail. We just, we just. I disagree. That's Mr. Dwyer's opinion. Okay, that is not the, the rule. That's Mr. Dwyer's opinion. Depending okay. on what you're doing, we need more clarification. Okay, I go back to my original statement. Right. It might be industrial. But in detail, too. How do we determine whether it is manufacturing? We need the detail of what you plan to okay, do. Okay, so and then you're going to be there. And then we may need to go to town council okay. to find out. Okay, okay we, will, we will not just use five people's opinion. We want to make sure we have some real backing to that. Okay, because it's obviously it'll determine whether or not for other people whether something like that could be industrial right because you're going to invest a lot of money in that and you don't want no one coming after you after right. and, and, no, and, stop. And, 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 and we don't want it coming after us right. 
We want to simply say, this is the opinion of council, and we'll go with it whatever way it may fall. I'm here before I go through the purchase of the building, so I'm not hiding anything from you or anyone else. Right, and, and, and that's very, very agile because we are not trying, we're trying to be upfront with you. Again, we're not anti but we want to make sure we're doing the, doing the right thing the right way. So our next step is to give us give us details of what you want to do. Okay. You can go back in two weeks. We're meeting again, mm -hmm. and you're gonna walk in like this. Mm -hmm. And depending on what you have, then we can, you know, especially with the details, we can give you some other some more opinions. And if we have to, if you want to counsel before you get any further, and hopefully we'll get an answer back within a reasonable time frame. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You got something else, Mr. Riser? Okay. I do. Okay. You're not yet. Oh. Wait for your turn. Uh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't get anxious. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Kirsten Modesto? Yes. Thank you, Mr. I'm at one. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, I'm at 195 Russell Street, Sears Plaza, Brigade, right. in there, 195. We'd like to renovate the back. We've grown considerably. I know it's exhausting. <laughs> um, 30, 33 employees, yeah. We, 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 success and success, huh? Yeah, it's exhausting. We actually just designed his coffee bags, which have won a bunch of awards and stuff like that, which is pretty funny, uh, funny seeing him here. But anyway, um, we would like to renovate the back, and I'd like to put some windows in the back of the building that you see from the street. <clears throat> back of the building, you mean? The back of the space we're at now. East. You find the back of the building. As, you, as you're driving along <coughs> Route 9, the back side that faces the old registry plaza? No. The, the, um, you know the Zoe's was it, in the it, front? It, it's the back of that side. So it faces east. Yeah. East, east side? The house. The, the, the house. Faces the house. The house. The house. Yes, faces yes. the house. That's east. Okay, yes. so facing yes. your jail's property if you would. Okay. Uh, okay. You want to put in? Three windows. Three windows. Oh, good Lord. That make it look better. Absolutely. Yes. I have no problem with that. Would it be okay? One of the things that I'm thinking about is I may move one of them down a little bit, or then we're not going to request the other location. Just one of the three windows. Yep. They're the same. Yep. Identical match to building. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank wait, you. Wait, 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 we gotta make a vote. We're gonna make a vote. Oh, sorry. We're gonna make a vote. Sorry. Yay! 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 Sure, come on by. Like, we've got a bar. We actually got the keg working in there. Wait, oh my God, I'm totally in. Wait, wait. Oh, I think I was totally joking. Yeah, I mean, we're I'm we're totally in now. Forget it. Oh. Go see what you had to say, Kirsten, and leave quietly. Yeah, don't talk past the sale. <laughs> you can really lighten up a meeting out there. <laughs> Not the keg. So if you add three windows to the east side, mm -hmm. to east facade. The windows are just gonna look like the rest of the windows in the yeah. in the building. Yeah. Not no kind of All right, I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval based on a finding that the uh, Proposed work constitutes no external enlargement of the existing floor area. Add three windows to east facade, same style as present. So moved. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 4 0. One absent. One absent. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck, everyone else. Mr. Reiser. Can we have some more quarters to put in the heater? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back in the room here. Oh, John, it has any more quarters. <laughs> <laughs> I have an plan. 438 River Drive. Uh, it's surrounded by another one. Oh, wait, down there. Rutherford, Rutherford, or something like that. 438. 438. By JJ's? Oh, no. Right next problem. door to, right okay. next door to JJ's. Okay. Cemetery. Yes. Cemetery's right there. 
Anyhow, the house, the house lot is here. From the, from the road to this dashed line is the existing house lot. The house is for sale. It's being sold. Septic system failed, apparently. They're adding. Oh, so they're adding property to the back of the new septic. I got you. So that's all that is. Not a buildable lot to be combined with the front lot to form one undivided parcel. Whose lot is that? No one's. Well, rather, rather, rather for it. Well, another one is right here. Yeah, and, the, and the land. Where's JJ's? Right here. Right here. Right here. Cemetery's here. Yeah. This is the lot. This is the building. This is the older house. house. This is the yeah, yeah. This is this is the this is the house. This is where JJ lives. Yeah, that's the house. That's the house. And that's the one that that's just ah, the north of it. Yeah. 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 Chairman's pen. Okay. Well, that's all the journals I would take now. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yo. That's all I have. Okay. Mr. Anderson, Ron Anderson. Yes. Communication between um, myself and the uh, installer, and he ended up putting up the signs last week after I had been emailing back and forth with Rob, the owner of uh, Sunrise, and uh, he wasn't able to get the signs back down this week with the holiday and everything. So, and then I just got back uh, out here today from Boston to try and see if we can get them down before coming to the meeting, but unfortunately, we weren't able to. Well, do you have a, you have a picture of the signs? Oh, yes. I saw the one that's on the uh, street pylon today when I went by, and it's same size and type as the other ones that were on there. So yeah, they are. Let them show. What is this? Yeah. 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 He, he was in. Oh, you were you were in last two weeks last meeting, John. Mr. Anderson is putting up uh, the Mill no Valley Commons near the tap room. Yeah. He's basically taking it from the majority of the remaining space. Yeah. And he's, you can tell him what you're doing. It's easier uh, than I can. <laughs> it's a coral farm and a uh, natural science incubator for researchers that are looking to go commercial. So they'll be testing their, um, their equipment, water filtration device, and uh, water sensors in our facilities so they can. No hazardous material? No, no hazardous material. 
Yeah, we have to actually ultra purify the water before we even put it in the tanks, and there's no one off or anything. So. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve the sign. Second. Well, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0, 1 absent. See, now you don't have to go. All right. Thank Very you. Very good. Good luck. All right. I, I told a few people about what you're doing, mm -hmm. and they have <coughs> all, they were at us. I have no idea. You've got to, you've got to go see this man. I don't know if the buck called except what he told us. Yeah. Is, what, would it be possible at some point in time for like, people to see what you're doing? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's really definitely, uh, we should be finished with uh, doing the setup by the end of January. Okay. So we definitely want to have all you guys come by. And uh, we're going to try and work with uh, the water department here in Hadley with um, their uh, filtration issue. Because they're out in the field where they got to pump the water out before and then put it back in. Yeah. So our researcher from Northeastern, uh, Dr. Rajik, she has a device that's solar powered that's able to filter that water. And then you know you will be able to put it back in and do that that testing that's required by the state or the federal government, I believe. So, okay. Yeah, but we want to definitely have everyone out, you know, okay. and come see the facility and meet the researchers. As well. it, it sounds wicked interesting what you're doing. Yeah, we're the only such facility in New England, so we'll see okay. that. Well, so do I. Hope, hope everything works out. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, please. Okay. Mr. Clark. Okay, so, can I see a besides? <laughs> no. <laughs> he'll be selling water. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's hoping we could help him out. Um, so we met a few weeks ago, and you guys had asked to come back. Uh, we brought this is Steve Lewis Subaru about the parking on. Uh, um, the, the, the old bicycle parking. Uh, so we have the application, uh, the two sets of mailing labels for you as well, okay. and seven sets of plants uh, for Buffalo Farm as well. Uh, we've also taken uh, Berkshire Design. Uh, uh, they're they're going to be assisting us as far as looking at it to make sure that there's no additional, as far as the runoff on the cars, causing any sort of sewage or any drainage issues at all. So we, we've, uh, we've retained them to, to do that as well. Okay. Um, so we're hoping, the one thing that's blank, yep, yeah, sorry. Uh, do you know if they, there was originally a site plan for a bank pad in that area? Yeah. Do you know if Berkshire Design did they're, it? They're the ones that did it. Okay. Yeah, and th these plants here are also it was, done it by was Berkshire Design. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that was there. Okay. Uh, so, so we've retained them, so with that, uh, I've been assured that we'd be able to have that done in time before a hearing. Uh, as well, and we also are we're also in the process of finalizing a ground lease with the owner of the of uh, To Your Health is the name of the actual name of the company for uh, for Pulse, and he's going to be working with him to get a lease, and also in that lease, which you guys have requested, there's also going to be wording about so that we can represent him on, on uh, you know on his behalf, we can do representation for him. I'll tell you, I don't like the way you got those cars back there. Yeah, and to address that, I, I, I don't disagree with you. It and, looks and like another car lot. I, we, the last thing we want to do is have cars. We don't want to draw attention to that lot. If it was up to me, I, I would have them pack park further back, turn them around, whatever it takes. I have no staff there. I can't help anyone that goes there, nor do you want them going there. So I will. What about a fence over there? Th th this is all part. This of is all part of the process. Yeah. Like that we're going to be able to review all that. Job. Well, yeah. right now, I would like you to take those cars, turn them around, and face them. I, I have a very good relationship with Ted, who owns the property, and I'll explain to him tomorrow that it the town like isn't happy with the way it looks. It looks like in the meantime, move it because I'm hoping that actually moving it, uh, you know, might might be enough, you know, as far as meeting your approval. So you know. I, uh, we'll be happy to do that. I'll turn them around, back them up, whatever you guys want me to do. The lot's a good size. We only need space for 60 cars. We don't even, right now we only have 30 there, but the most we have ever needed and we see the need is 60 The cars. way I look at that, that parking cars gives no revenue at all to the town. If there was a building there, it would collect big taxes on it. And that lot is for sale. Right. You know, so, so he would sell that lot. I, 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 I understand that. And that's something that uh, we had to. So the town is, is there any possibility you could still get obtain the property if they chase it to you? No, that no. is dead. That's that's a done that's, deal. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Yep. So, um, so again, we're looking for approval for 60 additional spots. In the long run, and again, we're going to get uh, Berkshire Design to verify that there's no issue with what we're doing there. 
Uh, we're confident because they're all brand new cars and there's no oil leaking or anything like that. Nothing. The, the cars have to be there on Route 9. They can't be nowhere else in town. That's we, be, yeah, I'd be open for suggestions on that as well. It is as far as the safety of our employees, because we are asking our employees to drive to get these cars and things. So going back and forth, obviously this is very convenient, um, you know, and, and helps the business stay efficient as well. Um, it's you know, again, we're, we have with that being on Route Nine, that doesn't excite us. Have you looked any other place? We have. We have. We have. have. Yep. How many sites? I'm sorry. How many sites? We've looked at three other options so far, and uh, it, it, none of them have worked out for different reasons or another as well. So, um, that lot has a, a traffic light there, so it's I feel comfortable with my staff getting in and out. It's very easy with, without having them cross into Route 9. So I mean, it, it's just, you know, everything about that location works out very, very well for us. Well, I'll, I'll just tell you right now, as far as I'm concerned, I would not vote for those cars on that lot the way they sit now. Yeah, and again, I'm, I'm going to address that. I'm going to address that tomorrow. I don't see an issue with moving those. Yeah, I just, have, I just have to convince the, the owner of the property that this is how we would like them. Well, one thing, as you prepare for the uh, the hearing, yep, uh, kind of give us an idea of what is compelling you to put the cars there. I mean, so what is your business yeah. plan and why they yeah. have to go there? You don't have to explain it now, but no, no, I yeah, but here, I can give you a rough idea. have a better understanding of your dilemma. Sure. So you know, we we recently I gave you a very short version to give an understanding as to why we are where we are. When we moved here, we got approval for you know a certain number of cars. I believe it's 187 for our license allowed. We, when we moved to Hadley, we were selling an average of about 80 cars per month. Uh, we now sell an average of over 150. Um, we've doubled our we've doubled our employees. Um, we've we've gained a lot of clients in the area. I had a couple in the room tonight, uh, uh, for that matter as well. But uh, so our service. Our service department has grown and grown and grown because of the amount of cars that are now in town that need servicing. And that's, you know, what a lot of what the space that we're using down the street is now being occupied by existing clients' cars. So our service department occupied a very small amount of the parking area or a lot. We now needed to widely, widely expand that and remove our retail spaces to help accommodate our local customers. So that's, and then what happened was we couldn't, we had nowhere to put them. So we, began working with the pizza property to try to try to acquire that. That fell through. And this is what you know where we are now. Do you have any problem. idea what the address is of the Bryson firm? Two seventy. Two seventy. Two seven zero. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just need that for the public. Yeah. Right, so. Okay. And the okay. labels that you have uh, are based on where their company is based on, which is a name. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is that. That's not a problem. Okay. Name developer. Rental property. What was the name? Parking. Okay. Bigness mm -hmm. and part of the key to the town park and one set of plans like this would be great. Yeah. Okay. And you know what the cost is on that? Or they'll tell it's you right on here. here. Oh, okay, three and oh, I see. Okay, yeah, okay. That's on the date. That's the date on the date. is 220. 220 is the year? It's right, written right on your too. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Well, that's more than time to prepare. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Okay. And, see on, you. and on 220, your expectation is what? That you will be able to explain this plan and the information that Mr. Zoranik asked of you, and we will review and you know, you'll have the answer, you'll have the I guess the details that you got from uh, To Your Health mm -hmm. to act as their agent. Yes. Um, so that we can tell you what we'd like to see, how we'd like to see it, parking, fencing, whatever you want to call it, and come to an agreement. Yes, you can do that. That's reasonable for all of us. Mm -hmm. And go forward. And we will have sent out the legal notices to the abutters, yeah. published the notice in the newspaper. Okay. If anybody cares to show up and ask questions from the public, that's why it's called public hearing. Okay. Right. Fair. So is the ex expectation that so Mark should be here from Berkshire Design? If you would like him, if you feel necessary. Yeah, would like him. I mean, the real thing about this is the trade. There's not a lot of other um, ancillary items to, to, to review. Right. It's right. really about the drainage and catching any possible runoff of the cars. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I would 
he may or may not recommend an uh, oil separator catch basin. I don't know that. Um, because the vehicles parked there. Is that there. what you're recommending? No, no. That would be something yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that would be something that we What's your expectation? I'm all set, Chris. We would we, we expect a clean letter of Berkshire letter. design okay. on what's being proposed. Okay. Okay for the reason. Yep. Yep. How long have you been parking the cars there? Uh when did you start? That started in January, January of last year. Yeah. January seventh. Of last year or the year before? No. Yeah. Seventeen. No, 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 yeah. no, no. Yeah, it was. It was about a year. It started in 2016. I have a letter that we wrote to the building inspector in 2016 about the parking on the bicycle front. You were parking there since 2016. Maybe, 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 maybe 2016. Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Anything else from us at this time? Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow. See you. All right. Are we still on tape? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Why do you want to square it? No, I was just going like, to lie to you all before I left. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that before I go? All right. Bye. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Happy New Year. Okay, yeah. happy, happy, new year. happy New Year. Happy New Year. Take care. Happy New Year. Good to happy see new you. Year. Happy New Year. Good to see happy you. New year. Nice happy to see you. Thanks again, guys. Good night. Boy, well, you guys are really crushy. <laughs> you know what? I don't actually sell cars. You know? Thanks. You should. I have a question for you. Because uh, sure. while I'm talking to Ted regarding the parking, do you have a layout you would like to see that would give us a chance to see it before the new year comes up? We we don't do design. No, okay, yeah. I'm just wondering. So, you, you guys have made comments, and I'm not yeah, saying it's yeah, yeah. Please don't misunderstand. Yeah, I'm wondering is there something in your mind that would be more ideal? I to personally do? want to see something that doesn't look like a place that selling cars. Car okay. yeah. okay. lot. And as, as I'm just looking for suggestions. That's all. Yeah. You know, I'm we, we we looking for really approval. So how do you want to see it? So, so. Something that. To John's point, something that makes it look like cars aren't for sale. Okay. To both your benefit and for the town. So that you want to go there. Sure. Okay. 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 I will do that tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Happy New Year. Let's see. Okay. We have other topics we're looking up. There's no public hearing schedule. Um, I'm sure Mike's not here, so I'm not sure if you want to talk about some of this stuff. And uh, Larry will be here at the next meeting. So, right. so we probably want to talk about the affordable housing trust at the next meeting with Larry. Um, MS4 change might be good, but would he know much about that? He, he would not. There is someone not. else from um, PBPC. PBPC. I, I circulated, uh, she came up with some recommendations for changes to the bylaw. Yeah, I saw all that stuff. They, they recommended we not do anything yet at this point. Yes. Did Marlowe stay on top of that? Uh, Marlowe and, yes, Marlowe is staying on top of it. Uh, Marlowe, David Nixon, and I met with this woman um, a couple of months ago. Uh, we're involved because some of the changes will have to be made to the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, what we have in the zoning bylaw for our uh, stormwater, our, our current stormwater bylaw is based on MS2 or MS3, and this is MS4. So that's why we have to come up with the changes the first time, and that's why we're going to keep on going. Uh, so, yes, they are recommending some changes that will have to go through us, and there's a question about who should be the hearing office for it. I mean, um, a lot of the things that go through us, every site plan approval, MS4 may be an issue. Conservation Commission is not involved with every project that goes through us, so it doesn't make sense to make them the MS4 agency in the town. It's, I guess it makes sense to keep us with it. You think maybe we can get Marlowe to give us 
he's been going to different meetings other than you have and Nixon has mm -hmm. to come in and totally explain what he knows about it. I'm sure we can. Uh, that would be a good idea. Get this kind of review, like, right. you know. So. so, defer zoning items to 2 6. And that's 4. This is one of the things that we were addressing probably a year and a half ago regarding facilitating permits. In other words, rather than having people go to various boards and prolong the, pro the uh, permitting process for a year. Right, it just makes it more difficult to do it. Exactly. We, we'll try to expedite things and make it. Yeah. So that was something that years ago, many, several years ago, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission had a, um, had a grant for streamlining permitting. We were talking about doing up uh, you know, guidelines, a little brochure about who to go, and you did a brochure. I, I, I did a brochure once upon a time, and we talked to PBPC about it. Basically, they kind of, the grant didn't apply to us because they were looking at places that had layers and layers and layers of permitting, like, you know, Amherst would be an example. Um, they said, oh, we are already as inefficient as we perceive, we're way more efficient than many other towns. But kind of something that we're going to have to attack ourselves, maybe with some of Larry's two cents on this one, of what we can do to improve it. Doesn't my heart have a thing what to do and where to go? He used to. I, I believe he used to. I thought to he, he updated that, so okay. maybe we should just well, contact him. Oh, sure, you made that. That was. Uh, they had a little pocket outside the building inspector. Right, right. So that's right. He used to give those out. Yeah. But we've we've added quite a few things since that was put up. That's going to be that's going to be ten years old. Um, I'll, I'll go to see Tim and ask him about that and see what he has if he still has it. And update it and make it more up to date, and maybe that'll help some stuff too. Well, maybe you can if we're going to work on that. Ask him if he would come here and, and yeah. you know, put his comments. Yeah, no, no. Tim, yeah, Arnold and Tim, or? Well, Tim is, Tim is probably the first, because they, they don't go to the, I don't know how much they go to the town EPW for. I think most permits go through the town hall. Right. Um, and Tim being kind of the focal point of many of them. Well, one of the examples is when we were redoing our subdivision, we called in uh, Mike Klosky and talking about where the water line would be located. And now Marlow wants to be intimately involved in the placing of the water. So instead of an engineer doing the checkoff, he wants to have the checkoff for water hookups. No. The town, the, the town should have that ability. He's not an engineer. He's not an engineer, but Somehow they want to be involved. That's we can. Well, they, they, well, they, we can certainly get them involved, not okay. get in the final approval. We, we really, we want to make sure that the burden of proof or responsibility is not on the town. Okay. The ultimate responsibility, like we reckon, Marlo can recommend this. I'd like to see this here. Like, like you know, Mike used to do a video those things, right? Mike used to do Mike used to do that and a lot of that stuff. We didn't have, haven't had many subdivisions in the last, you know, 15, 20 years. But the few that we've had, Mike put some put his two cents in off of here and here. He would usually put his two cents in with the uh, um, design company, the, the architect, if you would have who, yeah. who was designing it. Okay. But but no, we should we could make that formal by making them required to go to see DPW. Mm -hmm. As long as, it, but, but I think John's got a good point. We don't want the town to have the ultimate um, approval of it. Right, they're, they're not engineers. I mean, you have an engineer. Yeah, well. Uh, and I, then you have another engineer reviewing that engineer. Well, I. I so well, you got your checks and balances there. I know that, but the installation somehow they well, made it clear to me. Are, it's it, 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 fun. If we get Marla here to talk about some of this, and okay. we can talk about some of these other things, 
And it's not like we don't want Marlowe involved. No, when they install it, he, sh he should by rights be there to make sure that it's done proper. Yeah, that's not, that's okay. Right. All right. Anyways. Okay. Um, information. Fiscal 19 budget. Um, I want to make sure Mike's here for that. So probably something we want to put out until Mike's here for the next meeting too, Bill. Okay. Uh, information. All boards meeting. I didn't get any e emails on it or notification, but I see on the on the town board the board that the that next Tuesday. That is one nine one nine seven p.m. Excuse me. an all boards meeting at Hopkins. I think so. Yes. What is that? One nine. Next week, next week, week from tonight. Where at night or during the day? 7 p.m. at Hopkins. What day? One night. I'm not sure what they expect from us because they haven't received anything. That's a repeat performance of something that was done. We did an all boards meeting about a year and a half. Well, that's correct. Yeah, a year. Oh, two years. What the hell is that going to amount to? I don't know. Well, yeah, we haven't received wish wish. Agenda. We haven't received anything from what they want out of us. Um, did you? No. Uh, I did see Molly today, and she suggested that she give me a call. I know that there is. Um, we want to talk about the master plan, so it's a chance to sort of roll out the master plan. Okay. Um, I think. Oh, well, over there, there's a discussion of master plan update. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, but we didn't get not one response from any of those, did we? No. Now we sent off the uh, copy of the master plan. To every every right. department got a copy of the master plan, and it's on the town website. And we was also requested to have any comments to get back to us by well, last year sometime. Nothing was said. We never got a We never got one email or anybody's happy. So uh, I think we'll just might as well just explain that. You know, free air time, explain the process that we went through to get there, what it what it involves and what it doesn't involve. It's right. not, you know, even just in the time we were working on the master plan update, the whole library and senior center sort of came into existence and went on to be approved without even really being reflected in the master plan. Right. Um, I think there is, um, yeah, there may be some misconceptions we want to address because I think if someone sees master plan and oh that looks good that's going to solve all our problems. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, it's right. like roadmap for everything. But, you know, <laughs> it comes out. It's primarily a zoning guideline. guideline. Right. Uh, it's not going to tell uh, DPW how to organize their uh, equipment or right. Right. something. But, yeah, but I want to know what does a meeting like that accomplish? You know, the last time we last had time it, did, they figured out we had to, uh, we're going to expend how many millions of dollars uh, to satisfy everybody's wish list. And it didn't really work out that well. But, uh, I, can't see, I, I can't see this. We know, actually, we did learn some things. You know, among other things, uh, uh, Tim Neihardt started off on how we need to re redo the zoning definitions because there are. Uh, businesses that are uh, being turned away from Hadley because of how the zoning reads. And um, Jim and I looked at each other and said, what? <laughs> what kind of example did he give? No. 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 Yeah, no. This is oh. the first time, we, first time any of us on the planning board had heard it. So it was useful in that sense that we, we kind of learned a little bit about what is, um, you know, there, there are some misunderstandings of what who's doing what well i haven't sitting on the board for these years i haven't heard anybody come in and say well i can't run a business in that for, for what reason the None. only person who has come to us to say that the bylaw has a problem and it needs to be fixed before i can move forward was Mike larry roberts Mike. No, Barry Roberts. Barry Roberts. Barry Roberts, a couple of years ago, when he was trying to get this uh, project off the ground, found a uh, found some language that was just wrong, and we amended the bylaw uh, because you know, he had taken the time to really try to work through it. And that's, but apart from. Uh, 
apart from Barry Roberts, who had a good reason why something needed to be changed or he couldn't go forward, uh, we really have very little, have had very little input from anybody. We do, we do need a definition, definitions section, and we're going to work on that this year with uh, EVPC. Yep. And, you know, Tim has made a few comments about that. That's one of the things that he really wants to see, and we agree that we need to do something with it to make it clear because the definition in a dictionary says one thing, the definition by state law, building code says another thing, so we simply want to say this is what it means and be distinct on it, that's all. Uh, was this summary or a time? I saw the thing, because are we supposed to sign that? We're not supposed to take that, that course in here, right, Bill? You have to take it every two years or something like that. Okay. So uh, I sent it around to everybody, Okay. the link, so you can... Uh, Didn't we just do that last year? I don't know, last year might have been two years ago, right? Was. That's how fast the time goes by. So the other thing is that every, every time you're elected, is you... You've been on for two years, so you took it two years. He's, he's taken it, yeah. When you got elected. Right. When you first got elected, you took it. So that means it's time to do it again. Because it's been two years. Mm, wonderful. It didn't appear on the email. Did it tell us where to go? No, I, th I, I sent it back to Bill that you, you didn't give the links on it. You just said we're going to take that. Yeah, you know, I, I, why do you want me to tell I, you where to go? I forwarded it to <laughs> Jessica's. Well, Jessica said. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> there was no link attached to that. It was simply okay. saying the link is attached, but there was no attachment. That's there was no nothing. That's exactly and I replied back to you that the attachment is missing. You just go online to do that, right? Yes. Yeah. But you're going to know where to go. Yes. Yeah. In the state. And it's... If you don't know where to go, finding it is not the easiest thing in the world, like anything in the state of Miss. Did you ever heard the Amherst Apartments parking lot that we approved for the Amherst Apartments has, is being appealed by some abutters. And the Amherst portion of the apartment complex has not been approved yet. But they said that when it is approved, they're going to appeal the Amherst approval. So the uh, owner of the complex has been notified of the lawsuit, and Koppelman and Page have been um, given a copy of the lawsuit. Who are the people suing? Um, some of the folks who live in the, the uh, senior complex. You know what? The, the, the people that came before the meeting. The, the main plaintiffs are Louise Colligan and Douglas Colligan. Okay. And they're being represented by Michael Pill of Green Miles Lipton in Northampton. And it is up to the Amherst Apartment Complex to defend it. Yeah. If they don't, then it will happen accordingly. If they do defend it, it'll go to the appropriate channels and the legal system. <clears throat> so, it is what it is. That's correct. You Anybody have any other item for discussion? Yep. Uh, yeah. I want I want an answer on like Country Nissan's truck and Mighty Smallfoot truck advertising their business for the for the big fan truck okay. sitting on the side of the road. Jim, you have an answer to that, don't you? Or didn't we have something? I know, you, I know trucks can be lettered. Yes. But uh, that's not the problem. Yeah. The problem is they sit in that one spot. That's the problem. So what was the other one? Country Nissan and which? Midas and Midas Buffer. Midas Buffer. They, they got a van there. They, 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 they both have they oil change. Mark with advertising. One, one, um, Nissan's advertising oil change is something and Midas is advertising mufflers and, mufflers and something about tires and they, they actually, there's changes every once in a while. They think they've changed that sign a couple of times. You know, this is the next replacement to those mobile signs. Remember the ones that used to be on two wheels? Yeah. They were sticking models on Route 9. They came the, these are registered motor vehicles in the state of Massachusetts. Um, and, you know, I'm not... I think we ran this once before, and because they're a registered motor vehicle, there isn't much we can do about it, even if they sit there for months. I, I'm not sure if it was your opinion or 
building. It wasn't my opinion, it was the building inspector at the time. The only enforcement officer. Maybe we should get. Uh, well, when I asked him about the brochure for the update, I'll ask him about the, sun, the uh, Midas. Yeah, it's the guy who, yeah. uh, the guy who used to have the, uh, the um, Subway franchise. <coughs> can, can right. we, listen, can we get a ruling from town council if that is legal or not legal? Nyhart's not town council. No, that's true. None of us at town council. Send that to town council and said, look, we, we want a legal opinion. This is one I think we should, we should get that. <laughs> yeah, this, it's an enforcement issue, so we can encourage, we should tell Tim to get an opinion from council, but I don't think it's something we can ask for directly. It's, it's, well, we, don't, we don't have jurisdiction. They seem to get nothing done over there. It's just like the parking yeah. with echelons. Kick that can down the road and keep kicking it. Well, the first place to go is ask Tim and I'll find out what he what his opinion is of it and then ask you know we can go from there and ask him to get an opinion and we can we, we can look into that. Ask him to get an opinion from Del Conte. Okay. Can we just request him to do that? Yeah, we could ask him to do that. Right. Because it's it's to help him do his job. Right. It's not, a, no, it's not Well, a, it's to clarify what's right and what's wrong. So we have, we have understand that. Yeah. So through him, he can get that information for us. So I'll make that a motion. Let me send him a letter for that. That way it's in writing. You want to fill out a uh, zoning, possible zoning violation? Yeah, that would be the best way to do this. And I'll second John's motion. Thank you, and thank you, John. <laughs> 